So Fine Fine is a sponsor of the channel, but they did not pay me for this review. So any thoughts or opinions are my own, but they did send out the new version of the K688, which is one of their most popular, I would say USB to XLR microphones, if not the most popular one of their microphones. And uh, the reason why they sent it out is you'll probably see by the B-roll and everything, but this beautiful thing is now in white. This thing is magnificent. I, I, I fell in love with it. I was actually talking to uh, my representative from Fine Fine. And uh, after I did uh, the whole under $100 or whatever gift ideas, um, I'll leave that video down in the description. And they were fascinated and uh, very thankful for my giving my spot or whatever to them in the video. My video actually is doing pretty well. Uh, thank you guys for that, by the way. And um, it was really interesting because they were like, hey, you know, you want to check this out? And I was like, sure. And I was like, you just had to release it right after that video, huh? So this is going to be a just an overall sound test and everything. This microphone has been on the market for a long while. It's one of their more, I would say, professional looking microphones. It even says on the box that it, it is a podcasting uh, microphone. But the reason why I say it's more professional looking because um, right off the box, uh, I'll play a little snippet from what my wife who thought or whatever when I unboxed this and I asked her to compare it to the actual Fine Fine AM8, the one I have currently been using on my live streams, um, just to see which one she thought uh, was more expensive and uh, which one she thought looked more professional and stuff like that. So here's that little clip. Hey, hun, what, uh, which microphone do you think is more expensive? This one right here mm -hmm. or the new one? The one over there. New one. I think this one, the this one. Yeah, the fine fine. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah. The other one I don't see any turning. Oh, it's fine fine too. Oh, the same. Yeah, it's the same company. What's the point? They sent it out for a review. This is one of their options in white, and then okay, just re this, they just released this one in white. So yeah, without further ado, um, hopefully I can get some B-roll to um, make sure that this thing uh, gets your attention because they dropped it not only in white, but they also dropped it in pink. Uh, Fine Fine has been doing this with a lot of their products coming with different color variations and stuff, but it's nice to see them uh, do that to some of their older products out there um, going back and, you know, making things, I would say, uh, new as it were. Um, just by dropping a new colorway and everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about my thoughts and opinions overall of the microphone and then we're gonna go into some sound testing and then I'm gonna wrap it up uh, after that. All right, so just before we get into the actual sound test, I wanna go over my overall thoughts uh, of the build quality and just any kind of subtle differences I can uh, see from using the Fine Fine AM8 to now the Fine Fine K688. Uh, unboxing it and everything, you could probably tell a little bit um, on camera. It looks a little bit more appealing than um, I would say the AM8, just based off the whites itself. You could probably can't really tell too, too much on camera, but there is a difference in the machining, I would say, process. Um, this kind of reminds me even with the shock mount and everything kind of reminds me of a vinyl sheen like a super uh, smooth kind of almost silky looking uh, sheen or wherever as far as the smoothness of it and the texture I don't know how the else to explain it to you guys um, but in person it does look like it's like vinyl wrapped and white or whatever uh, it's not like a bad thing or something like that or I think it's gonna blemish or anything like that I actually think um, whatever they use to machine it or whatever is actually going to help it preserve its professional and pristine looking um, aesthetic as well as uh, the fine fine am8 um, it's machine in a typical i would say you would think uh process with um it being plastic and everything and, and lightweight and stuff the only metal thing or whatever is the yoke and it's, it's the only thing that makes it heavy um speaking of the yoke i do want to say that uh this is something that i kind of mentioned in the bm88 review uh when i unboxed this microphone or wherever and talked about the yoke and everything um there is a pink version as well as an all black version i don't know if they're coming out with different colors wherever in the future because we've seen it obviously going back to the k 
uh, 688 that they're, you know, bringing other microphones and other things wherever up to speed as far as having different color options. Now that that is available in white and pink as well, um, the yoke, the yoke needs to be the same gray as the, the, the I would say the the wind foam here or wherever to protect you from explosives or plosives or wherever. Um, the yoke needs to be the same color or needs to be all in white. The reason why I harp on white aesthetic and just other color options so much here on the channel is because when somebody is going for a specific, I would say theme or wherever, or they want their setup to look a certain way, like maybe they just want white on white and just clear pure white, or they want an all black setup or something like that. Having little accent pieces, especially when you're getting from different companies, wherever can throw off your whole um, aesthetic or wherever. And it can honestly be a blemish or an eyesore because you have everything all in white and just completely white and then you have a three-tone microphone with gray and a black yoke um and that's why i have a problem with a lot of things and it's not just fine fine doing it it's a lot of companies that do it um i've tried multiple times to try to get a all white themed setup or wherever but that just hasn't happened or wherever so you know i'm gonna have to go for a white and black setup um so it's just unfortunate but here uh, most of it can be hidden on this microphone because the yoke itself or the shock mount whatever you want to call it is actually white the only thing in here that's black or wherever is the little bands to keep uh the microphone you know attached to the actual shock mount so these would be really really easy to uh, i would say replace with white you can get take them out you know spray paint them or something like that it would be very very easy um to change that whereas this yoke i think it would be kind of hard to find um and then you would have to possibly just take it off and spray paint it or uh wrap a vinyl around it or some white tape or something like that but i think when it starts to uh blemish when you do something like that to this piece it would be no noticeable than doing it to this one um again gray wind muff or wherever a little bit harder to take off um this is what it looks like in the inside the black or whatever but that's not really a problem because it's going to be covered up uh with obviously the actual muff i would say the top the mute button you can't see it here you can probably kind of tell it's a little bit of a different white than this actual white or whatever other microphone um, it's not too bothersome but if something slight off white kind of thing bothers you like i know it bothers some people um just know that that's a thing but this mute button is not necessary unless you use the usb uh, portion of the microphone um, going to the back or wherever you see it and we have the xlr input we have a headphone jack and a volume uh, knob for the microphone or volume gain and then um like i said xlr and usb ports on the back um, nothing too fancy there again it's live monitoring so as soon as you talk to wherever you're hearing it back that feedback or wherever i didn't notice at least for me an any kind of delay on like talking into the microphone and hearing it back in my headset uh, me personally i don't monitor my audio i usually test it before i live stream or test it right before i record a video or something like that to know where my volume levels are at or everything like that. I don't like hearing my voice because I hear it enough with me being the only person that edits these videos and live streams and stuff. Um, it's really irritating to hear my voice since like, I would say 2014, uh, having to edit videos and constantly hear my voice all the time for hours on end, um, I'm, I'm already going insane. So having this port or whatever for live monitoring, obviously having that national, I would say instant feedback or wherever, that might be something for some people I, it doesn't bother me. You get it here on the AM82 as well. Um, so I don't use either, but it's there if you guys want it. Obviously, the AM8 does, does not have the headphone, um, has the headphone jack, but it does not have the um, headphone volume knob or has the gain knob or wherever on the back. The actual knobs or wherever is going to be on the front right here. And then you're going to have, you know, two separate knobs and you're going to have that capacitive mute button on the box on the back and then you would face the microphone like this so you would have to reach the knobs underneath the yoke or wherever that might be a problem for some people um it's neither here nor there for me and then obviously when you wanted to mute it would be up top um i think uh the reason why they didn't put it down here or wherever was probably because there is rgb on this microphone um i'll try to put uh, some advertisement or wherever of the rgb or wherever on screen for you guys but again it has R uh, rgb and stuff like that so this would be like more of a streamer microphone i would say um if you if you wanted to wherever for usb but if you were doing some kind of podcast maybe some regular normal youtube videos um and you wanted to look more professional i would go with this one um i'll put the prices on screen for both of these um if you are interested in the colorways or you're interested in the whites you know there you go but that's just the difference between you know 
I would say the more professional, a little bit more costly, uh, top of the line, uh, fine, fine microphone that you would get with this versus a, one that's a little bit more cheaper or wherever on the side or wherever for maybe, um, you know, newer content creators, ones that are looking to stream and stuff like that. And again, like RGB and everything. So now with all those thoughts out the way, let's go ahead and jump into some sound tests. So what I'm going to be doing is hooking up the Fine Fine K688 and it's going to be hooked up to the Fine Fine SC3 mixer. Um, it's an audio interface or wherever. I'll have a link to my video review of this mixer down below. It's like a $50 mixer um, from Fine Fine that I bought with my own money and I did a review on it. Um, we're going to be testing it against this Shure microphone right here. I'll put the price on screen so you guys know how much that costs. We'll be testing it against a mobile microphone right here. Again, I put on screen how much it costs. We're going to be testing it with a, I would say, content creation microphone. It's not something typically you would use in this fashion, but it is an XLR input. So we're going to be testing that. And then obviously, to find find am8 we'll be testing against that and then the Cinco mic d1 is the microphone that i typically use for this videos uh, types of videos but since i am using the comica vm30 um so i can use obviously that microphone in the testing or whatever for the xlr so you guys can hear uh everything compared to the microphone so again Thank you fine fine for sending this out let's go ahead and jump into those tests all right so you're still hearing the comica vm30 overhead um what i'm going to do is test the fine fine k6 uh 88 and then i'm going to test against the other microphones and then in editing i'm going to replay the audio clip what i'm going to do also so you guys can understand that there is no actual audio processing or anything done this is just going to be clean audio you know in the fine fine uh, audio mixer or whatever just recorded into OBS. Um, I'm also going to have a fan in the background or wherever it is on level six. Um, so it's offhand or wherever it's just right off screen or wherever blowing directly towards the microphones or wherever at an off access uh, angle. And um, it's just going to simulate, I would say, room noise or something like that, or white noise, noise floor, whatever you want to call it. So if you're streaming or recording or something like that, um, this is going to show you what you can kind of expect from the microphones themselves um, in order to go ahead and, I guess, um, see which one might be preferable to you. I will put on screen what microphone I am currently testing and the price of the microphone so you guys can see uh, the consistency and what I think uh, would be best for you guys. Uh, and then we'll wrap up the video test 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 this is the fine fine k688 professional podcast microphone this is what you can expect from it again the fan is put on level six right next to me um, this is just the ambient i would say noise and everything i'll stop talking so you can hear the noise floor and now i will go ahead and turn off the fan so you can also hear the noise floor And now I'll turn back on the fan. And now I will turn up the fan to level eight. And now I'll turn off the fan. And again, the fan is literally, I would say a little bit further than the arm's length away. So what we have right here is the Fine Fine AM8 in white with the fan on level eight. I'm gonna stop talking so you can hear the noise floor. I'm gonna turn down the fan to level six. And now I'm gonna turn off the fan. And here's the, again, fine, fine AM8 in white. Here's that sound test. This is how it sounds. Again, no post-processing, no EQs or anything like that. This is just how the microphone sounds straight out the box if you were to hook it up to a audio mixer through the XLR. I know people would want to see a USB, I would say, comparison, but I have a lot of USBs plugged into my computer and unplugging microphones and plugging them back in or wherever would just ruin the bus or the USB bus or wherever on my computer because it's already to its limit. And then on top of that, um, some of these microphones don't even have that USB option. Just know that they're there and uh, on the fine, fine microphones or wherever. So again, there you go. All right. So next up, we have the Shure MV7X. I believe it's just the one that has the XLR cable uh, port or wherever. It's not the headphone one with the digital in 
I would say touch screen, all that stuff. Um, this one is going to be a little bit cheaper than that one, obviously, for whatever reason. Sure, thinks you need to pay more for having the capability of being able to use a product. It, it's just dumb. Um, so this one, again, is going to be one of those premium choices that people would uh, suggest to you. So here's the, I guess, audio quality with the fan on level six. And here's that noise floor. And let's go ahead and move up the fan to level eight. And here's that noise floor. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the fan so you can hear that noise floor. And this is how it sounds, obviously, with no filters, no EQ, no post-processing. This is just straight into the fine, fine mixer or whatever. All right, so this one is going to be a little bit different. Be very, very careful as far as listening to this. Um, I might have to adjust this in post. I'm not entirely sure. I'm listening to it right now on my headphones. So I'm trying to make sure I don't talk too loud or whatever. But this is what's known as a cardioid. What microphones that we have been looking at so far is what's known as a dynamic microphone, which means it ejects any off access uh, sound or whatever. This one just kind of absorbs everything. And it's supposed to be able to, uh, you know, I would say, get the wetness and the fullness of somebody's voice. Um, so some people prefer this for like singing or instruments or, you know, talking and stuff, whereas for podcast radios and everything like that to get the clarity and to, you know, kind of reject the stuff around the studio or YouTube videos and stuff. A lot of people like to use dynamic microphones in different shapes, whether it be a shotgun microphone or a traditional microphone like this. Um, so. Again, this is going to pick up a lot of those room for reverberations and stuff. This is the Movo VSM7 or 5 or wherever. I think there is a 7 and I think they have some other uh, microphones out there wherever as far as, uh, you know, different uh, models and everything. This is one of their older models. This one comes, if I remember correctly, around $99. It comes with the XLR cable, the shock mount, the pop filter, everything like that. This is all in one stop shop, I would say microphone, as long as you have the XLR interface. Um, this microphone in particular does have some adjustments on the side as far as a low pass or low cut filter um, and a negative uh, DB filter. So I'm going to go ahead and switch those. All right, so this is the negative 10 decibels or wherever DB. So you can kind of dial in the EQ right there. So again, that's there. If that's an option for you guys, I'm going to go ahead and flip it back up. So this is just the balance. Um, so you can tell the difference right there. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the little flat, uh, I would say gain or whatever. So you can see the difference. I don't know if you can really hear it with my voice, but there is a difference. I will go ahead and do that again. So you can tell now that the low pass filter is, uh, you know, deactivated. Now the low pass filter is activated. So there's supposed to be a difference there, but you know, it's up to your ears if you hear it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the fan. And you can probably hear the fan in the background a little bit more because again, this is a cardioid microphone. It's not gonna reject that fan from the side. Now the fan is on level eight. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down to level uh, six. So this is, I would say, somewhat a little bit above average i would say room noise or wherever especially if you're playing you're talking to people you have maybe music playing in the background or something you might have somebody else in the room you know computer fans going and stuff like that um, i can turn it down to level i would say uh let's go ahead and go down to level three and you can still hear it going on in the background what i'm gonna do is put on level eight and then I'm going to do that negative 10 uh, dB. And this is pretty much what you would get or what you would sound like or wherever if you have that negative dB or wherever. Um, just pretty much what it does is turn down the volume of the overall, uh, I would say, microphone or wherever as far as the gain and everything because there's no gain knobs. There's no nothing like that or wherever. It's just pretty much what you get. Um, I'm going to turn it back up so you can probably hear me a little bit clearly. I'm going to turn off this and I do want to go ahead and say I didn't say it in the beginning, but uh, the DB or, whatever, or the gain on the fine, fine audio mixer, there is no like actual, I would say numbers or wherever, but I have it about half on the meter or wherever. So 
around 40 to between 40 and 50 db or wherever um uh, most of these microphones do need phantom power the k 688 doesn't seem like it needs phantom power i did a test or wherever beforehand but um some microphones don't need it some microphones do need it so if you do need it and you're looking for an audio mixer um you can get the fine fine sc3 um, i will leave in the description two um audio mixers that i've already done reviews on so if you're interested in a premium one and a budget one you can check out uh both of those videos down below all right, so this is the C2 pencil condenser microphone from uh, Samsung Audio. Uh, so this is what I used to use in my living room studio to edit uh, the, the microphone or whatever to make it sound the best or whatever because it was really good in big open rooms um, because the sound uh, would dissipate before I got really got to back to the microphone and the microphone was able to uh, really pick up my voice and get it really close since it's a smaller microphone um, just out of frame or whatever. So I was really able to get it closer to me and just overall I like the sound from it but when I moved into this room or whatever to do my YouTube videos and live stream I noticed that this one's a little bit too sensitive for what I'm trying to do and I don't really like having microphones in the shot when I'm doing YouTube videos like this because um, to me it looks a little bit unprofessional and on top of that having a wireless lavalier system and seeing a microphone or wherever it just it doesn't look like I'm sitting here talking to you it looks like either you're doing kind of like an interview or or um, some kind of news broadcast or something like that that kind of stuff makes sense but when you're watching a YouTube video and somebody is you know having a camera and stuff like that and they're trying to do stuff they should look like they're trying to be a little bit more professional and actually care about what they're doing um, and having microphones in the shot or wherever just looks like you're being lazy or you don't really care about your I would say production quality or, or anything like that so if you are interested in something like this maybe you have a bigger room or something and you don't mind booming out a shot these are a joy to EQ there's nothing really wrong with them or anything like that it's just for a more closed in space these microphones um, are not going to really do it for me even with EQing them um, and DaVinci Resolve and stuff like that and putting VSTs they just they they don't really work in I would say smaller rooms all right, so that's the noise floor. Let's go ahead and turn it on level eight. It's very subtle, but you could probably hear the wind just a little bit. Let's go ahead and go down to level six. And let's go ahead and get the noise floor turned off. And this is one of the reasons, again, why I didn't want to use this microphone again anymore because it picks up fan noise, especially in here where I need the fan a little bit closer because the room is closer because all the lights and stuff, it gets hot in here. <laughs> All right, so lastly, we're going to be checking out the Cinco Mic D1. This is the microphone that I've been using uh, for a lot of my videos recently. Um, I switched between the Comica VM30 that you heard at the beginning of the video versus this one um, just because I really do like the sound of this microphone. I've been told that people like the sound of the Comica VM30, so you guys be the judge. But um, So again, this is with it with no EQs and the fan blowing on level 6. This is the noise floor. Now I'm going to move it up to level 8. And now I'm going to turn it off. And that's the noise floor. So I do want to go ahead and specify that, uh, again, all these microphones, it doesn't really matter with the noise floor and the fans and stuff like that, because you as a content creator, regardless of what microphone you pick up, um, even if it's none of these microphones, you should be putting what's called VSTs or voice plugins or whatever you want to call it or whatever to EQ or equalize the sound of your microphone to negate sounds of like fans and the room noise and the gain and everything of your microphone needs to be correct and all that stuff you should be doing that anyways if you are trying to you know live stream or even play video games even if you're not taking it seriously as a job um, you should be trying to at least make it tolerable or enjoyable for people who are coming to watch your content um, whether it be a live stream or videos or anything like that so again 
please, 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 if, if anything, make sure and see if your editing software allows you to use plugins uh, for microphones for EQing a microphone or VSTs or you know maybe that you're using something like the wavelength software or maybe the beacon software something like that or maybe you have uh, a gold xlr for whatever reason um just making sure that maybe some kind of microphone software that you're using maybe through a mixer or a preamp or whatever it is um and making sure that you're putting a um a limiter or a de-esser, uh, a noise gate, uh, the, the noise background removal. Um, there's different ways of doing it. Um, and again, people will thank you for taking the time to making sure that your videos or your live streams or wherever, or just your content in general sounds good. And it's not very distracting with the fan going on in the background and people can't hear you because you have it on blast and you didn't EQ your microphone directly. Um, so again, this is just a not a typical microphone I would say people would use for live streaming and stuff like that, but I do think it's a good sounding microphone. And um, this is something that people use for booming at a shot. Like I have a microphone over my head, like I talked about before, and this just allows uh, your YouTube content to sound really, really well. Of course, you can use this for live streaming if you wanted to, um, but yeah, single mic D1, really, really good microphone. All right, so we're back here with the fine fine k688 i turned my fan back on eight and now i'm gonna turn it back down to like seven or something like that so maybe you can hear it in the background or something like that but i do want to go ahead and say guys this is a really really good microphone um i believe off the top of my head i'll probably have to put the prices on the screen but i believe it was like 74 dollars um this is a phenomenal microphone and on top of that having different color options from pink white and black um and i can see why this is one of their most popular again if it's not the most popular microphone um, that they have released to date and i see why the quality of sound that you get here especially from a standpoint of you know maybe you're a new content creator and you're looking for a really good microphone that looks a little bit more professional and now having different color options wherever for your setup um i just i can't understand why uh, nobody is really still saying that this is the king of below $100 microphones. Um, I know that it's popular on YouTube, like I said, as far as a lot of video reviews have been done on the microphone, but why when I hear people talk about microphones, they're talking about like the Shure MV7X and this microphone exists. Um, it's just kind of weird to me that, you know, you have such a good quality microphone here and now Fine Fine has released obviously an audio mixer um, and then they have headphones like these. And I would just list the, the whole Amazon page to find find down below. Again, I know I'm sponsored by them or wherever. And if you do click the links down below, they do help out wherever. And it has uh, links or wherever are going to be Amazon affiliate links. And it's going to help out the channel. And it just allows uh, find find to see that people are using my link to purchase or wherever. And that's what that sponsored version comes in or wherever. Again, no money is changing hands. They're just seeing it or wherever. And it allows me to keep on getting products from them to test for you guys as well. So again, check it out down in the description. They have a lot of, lot of good products and um, I just can't sing their praises enough. I honestly do think that um, this is the company that a lot of people should be paying attention to and seeing or wherever out there in the content creation realm when the other companies are making products for content creators and then they're charging three or four times when I could just get this microphone and it sounds, in my personal opinion, a little bit better than the Shure MV7X. And again, this is a hundred and something dollar microphone. Um, and then they have an XLR version with the USB version or wherever with like the touchscreen monitor, all that stuff, wherever. And that thing's like 200 and something, almost $300. Whereas this microphone, again, looks professional in different colorways too. Um, and on top of that, uh, I got compliments when I first hooked up this thing to, you know, the live stream or wherever. They were just like, wow this microphone sounds good and it's below a hundred dollars and it just blows people's minds or wherever um the capability and the sound quality that you can get out of it even when you add on top of that plugins and vsts and stuff like that which i'll do right now so this is a subtle uh i would say eq or wherever it's not really dialed in because i have it for this sound mixer in particular and last time i used a sound mixer or wherever it was for the single mic d1 so the EQ obviously is not going to be tailored, I would say specifically to this microphone, but um, you could see obviously if you just adjusted something just a little bit more or wherever um, the overall sound quality of this microphone. So again, 
There'll be links to this down in the description and uh, let's go ahead and wrap up this video. With that being said, I hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button. It helps out small channels like me. Um, again, thank you so much for the support and everything, guys. If you are interested in seeing any of this live as far as unboxings or talking about products or anything like that, or maybe you want to suggest a product, you can always catch me live over on my streams, wherever. Here's the link to all my socials right there. But you can find a live stream link is usually at the top of the description over on kick.com for slash squidhead joe um i live stream me playing video games or just talking to people in general helping them out um the other day i spent like three hours talking to my chat or wherever about uh i would say new products and stuff for people who are trying to get off the ground with content creation making their stuff look a little bit uh more professional and stuff so i don't have a problem sitting there doing that with you guys and again uh thank you so much for fine fine for sending out this microphone for a review i'm very very pleased and happy with it and um Hopefully you guys continue to have a squid-tastic day. Thank you guys again so much for showing so much love on the YouTube video lately. It means a lot, especially um, when I've been fighting a lot of mental issues lately uh, with my bipolar depression and um, just being able to get these videos out still because you guys show so much love and support. Uh, it really does mean a lot. So with that being said, hopefully you guys continue to have a squid-tastic day. God bless you and yours. And deuces, everybody. I'll see you guys in the next one. Y'all take care.